All right, today we're taking a look at a system of two blocks that are connected by a string which runs up over a pulley. Now one of these blocks is hanging from the string and the other is sitting on a level surface. And I'm going to show you how to solve for the acceleration of these two blocks when the system is released from rest. Now in this problem we're going to say there's some coefficient of friction between this block and this horizontal surface. And we're also going to say that this pulley has some mass and some radius. And I'll show you how to factor in both of those issues into our solution as we go through and solve for acceleration. Now the first thing we need to do in our solution here is establish a positive direction. You see, if this hanging block moves downward, that's going to correlate to the clockwise rotation of this pulley, as well as the motion of this block to the right. So we're going to say that's the positive direction. So anything pulling all of these objects either to the right or downward is going to be positive, and anything opposing that motion, like friction, is going to be in the negative direction. Now to solve for the acceleration of the system, we're going to need to apply Newton's second law to each of these three objects individually. Now Newton's second law says the sum of all forces on any object is equal to that object's mass times acceleration. So looking first at the free body diagram of this block up here. There's gravity acting downward on the block, as well as the normal force between the block and the horizontal surface, holding the block up. And those two forces cancel out. Now horizontally, we've got the tension in this string pulling the block forward. And because there's some coefficient of friction between the block and the surface, there's going to be friction acting backwards, opposing the forward motion of this block. So applying the horizontal forces on this block to Newton's second law. We can say the tension force, that is the force pulling the block forward in the positive direction, minus the friction force, which is acting backwards, is equal to m1a. m1 being the mass of the block, and a being the acceleration of the block. Now friction is given by the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force. And going back over here to our block, you can see gravity downward and the normal force upward are equal in magnitude. So we can say our friction force is equal to mu m1g. Now subbing that in over here, we get the tension in the string minus mu m1g equals m1a. Now the issue here is we actually have two unknowns, the tension in the string as well as the acceleration of the block. So we can't solve for the acceleration of this block quite yet. We're going to have to figure out some other stuff first. Now the next thing I want to do is look at this hanging block down here. Again, we're going to apply Newton's second law to this hanging block. And looking at the free body diagram of the hanging block, we've got the weight of the block, that's m2g, acting downward, and the tension in the string acting upward on the block. So plugging those into Newton's second law, we get m2g minus t2 equals m2a. And again, we have two unknowns, the tension in the string and a, the acceleration. Now if this was a simpler problem where this pulley didn't have any mass, all we'd have here is just two equations and two unknowns, which we could rearrange to solve for the acceleration of our two blocks. But because this pulley has mass, we have to complicate this problem a little bit. You see, if the string runs over this pulley, and this pulley is going to spin as this whole system moves, we need to apply Newton's second law to the pulley. The issue being the pulley doesn't translate, that is to say it doesn't move linearly as left or right or up or down. Instead it rotates, so we're going to need to apply Newton's second law to this pulley, but in a circle. Now the rotational version of Newton's second law says the sum of all torques acting on an object is equal to that object's rotational inertia multiplied by its angular acceleration, where torque is equal to I alpha. Now the torque on this pulley is the result of two forces that are acting on this pulley. The string pulling downward here, and the string pulling horizontally to the left. You see, torque is the result of a force acting at some radius. Or it's given by the equation, torque is equal to Rf sine theta, where R is the radius, F is the force, and theta is the angle between the force and the radius vector. Now the nice thing with this pulley, or really any time we have a string wrapped around a pulley, is that the force from the string on the pulley is always going to be perpendicular to the radius vector, meaning the sine theta term goes away. But the critical idea in this entire problem is that if this pulley is going to spin, or really experience angular acceleration, there needs to be a net torque 
on this pulley. No different than a net force has to act on an object in order to cause it to accelerate in a straight line. And the consequence of that is that one side of the string has to be pulling harder on the pulley than the other side. Otherwise, the pulley wouldn't rotate or speed up. And what that means is these two tensions in our string are not the same. Or going back over here to our equations, the tension in this function that we came up with is different from the tension right here. So I'm going to say this part of the string, which is connected to block 1, has some tension, we'll call it T1. And this string over here connected to our hanging block, or block 2, we'll call that T2. So looking just at the pulley here, we can say that the tension 2 acting at some radius of r is producing a torque in the clockwise or positive direction, and T1, also acting at a radius of r, is going to be acting in the negative direction. And we're going to set that net torque equal to the inertia of our pulley multiplied by its angular acceleration. Now the inertia of a disk is given by the equation 1 half mr squared. So plugging in the mass of the pulley as well as its radius, we have this term 1 half mp r squared times alpha. Now we're getting closer to having a system of equations here. The issue now though is that because we have a the linear acceleration both here for this block 1 and here for block 2, that is the acceleration we're trying to solve for, the problem is we now have this angular acceleration right here. And that needs to be converted into a linear acceleration. Now, angular acceleration is given by the equation a over r. So we can sub that in right here, leaving us with this, an equation that tells us about the total torque on the pulley as a function of its inertia and linear acceleration. And you'll notice we have a little cancel party with our radius here, leaving us with three nice neat equations and three unknowns, t1, t2, and a. So to solve the system of equations for A, we're going to take these two equations and rearrange them for T1 and T2. And then we'll sub them into this third equation. So taking our equation for our pulley and then subbing in our equations for T1 and T2, we get this function, which tells us that A, the acceleration, is equal to the net force, that's m2g, pulling the system in one direction, minus mu m1g, that is the friction pulling everything in the opposite direction. And we divide that net force by our effective total mass. That is m1 plus m2 plus one half of a mass of our pulley. So this is how you solve an Atwood machine when you're dealing with both pulley mass as well as friction between one of the blocks and the surface. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.